Welcome everybody to this talk. My name is Lukas Pletta. I'm head of the Human Factors Lab at the Applied Research Center UNM Research uh, in Graz, Austria. And I'm happy to share our recent work on tablet PC-based dementia training, in particular on playful multimodal activation with assessment of neuropsychological profiles in Alzheimer's disease. That work was done in cooperation with my colleagues at the Institute, as well as with the Austrian NGO Sozialverein Deutschlandsberg, who are practicing the dementia training in the home of the person with dementia. And also with Kent University, particularly the Department of Experimental Clinical and Health Psychology, as well as with the Austrian startup Digital Life. So uh, the tendency in dementia intervention is that pharma giants step out of dementia drug research like Pfizer in 2018. And that gives rise to non-pharmacological intervention, in particular research on impact of risk factors, as you can see to the right in the publication of Livingston and others, particular on lack of physical, social, or cognitive stimulation, lack of sleep, bad nutrition, and so on and so forth. And it has been shown that particular multimodal uh, intervention, as it has been shown by in the finger study by Nganda and others in 2015, uh, provides statistically significant uh, changes and benefits in uh, with respect to the decline of cognitive functionalities, which cannot show unimodal intervention. So in the finger study, cognitive training, CCT-based physical exercises, dietary recommendation, vascular monitoring have been applied in a successful way. The Austrian way to do it in a pragmatic way is MAS training, MAS for Morbus Alzheimer syndrome, as it has been uh, started and uh, developed by Professor Stephanie Auer, uh, following major aspects of the research of Reisberg and others. The program is based on five columns, like facilitation of perception, physical activity, support of activities of daily living, and so on, in particular, uh, providing a global stimulation to activate and nurture existing multimodal resources of the person with dementia. And basically, this program is under prescription in Austria. So how is the holistic concept with CCT intervention? Uh, basically, it seems that there's still the focus mostly on cognitive training. As you can see in the table to the right, which has been proposed by a colleague from Medi University of Graz with different kinds of CCT approaches, it's been proposed recently, there's more or less only unimodal uh, intervention like on the cognitive side, a little bit on the physical side, but not really covering a broad spectrum uh, of multimodal intervention. Of course, there's playful stimulation in different ways. Um, the software Lumosity, Cognit, Cognifit for person with dementia, Neuroracer, particularly C here, a couple of European projects, treating the monitoring, estimating of the status of mental processes, motivating users for cognitive and physical activities. But uh, there's also a specific approach to follow serious games, like proposed in a taxonomy on serious games for dementia from McCallum and others. And they mentioned but the uh, particular assessment games are still highly underrepresented. To uh, fill this gap, we are following the Digital Life app, uh, which is proposing multimodal activation of cognitive performance. You can see on the picture is a standard tablet PC that is used with some coverage to prevent from destruction if it's, for example, falling down uh, easily to handle stick. For the person with dementia, it can use a demo version, which is available on the Google Play Store. Basically, the components uh, consist of cognitive exercises, but also sensor motor exercises. And uh, there's an uh, option available in terms of a research prototype uh, that provides case control exercises. And of course, in the context of MAS training, uh, there's the support of activities of daily living, uh, organization of narrative cafes, and also provision of health service, providing recommendation for dietary and uh, mobility aspects. There's a diversity of playful exercises, as you can see, to the left standard games like Spot the Difference or Prayers the Game, Multiple Choice. To the right, you can see uh, sensor motoric exercises, but there's also a lifestyle questionnaire available uh, in an easy to follow way that you can really track the risk factors over time. 
And uh, serious games are important, of course, for the adherence to training. So in a, a publication from Colin and others has been mentioned that in the finger study, actually only 24% uh, percent, uh, of the people, persons with dementia, follow the CCT training in contrary to the other interventions like dietary consultation. With the same criteria, we uh, attain 70% of adherence uh, with the digital life app. And that may be also due to the diversity of the different kind of uh, serious game contents. There are 44 topics, up to 47 exercises per topic, 16 types of exercises, four different grades of difficulty, giving rise to more than 6,000 exercises, which are available in five different languages, English, German, Slovenian, Croatian, and uh, the Dutch version. The research prototype as extension is called Myra for mobile review of instrumental attention. And it's based on a tablet camera uh, based gaze tracker, which gives rise to gaze analysis in reference to visual content on the display in the frame of the series game, of course. And uh, we have uh, researched on this kind of uh, impact in terms uh, of a study with 15 participants, uh, 10 weeks intervention. And let me give you some uh, insight into the study uh, in the following. Lena is living in a nursing home. She is a person diagnosed with Alzheimer, a disease without a cure, serious games for multimodal training and brain fitness, support to delay cognitive decline. Lena is playing the Myra game. She started to play it, with the help of an Alzheimer trainer, who was visiting her every week. But finally, she can play the game, totally on her own, and she is proud of it. Myra is a game to train executive functions, through a gaze interface. Myra is played on a tablet PC. The first step is to calibrate eye gaze, with respect to the tablet-based display, by gazing at flowers and confirming by pen. A device embedded camera tracks the face for eye detection, and the estimation of gaze orientation. After calibration, the game menu appears. Games are inspired by activities of daily living, like feeding a cat, gardening, or cleaning. The tablet camera tracks the elderly eye movements, controlling the game by gaze only. Lena has her eyes shut quite a lot, but the gaze tracker works quite well. The red dot depicts the system's estimate of gaze on display, within two areas of interest, the doors. The anti-Zacade test will be evaluated. A good or bad character might appear, and by fixating them, characters get activated, either for good or bad. The bad guy will steal food from poor cat's feeding dish. The good grandmother will provide food to the cat, to make her healthy and happy. Lena is activating the grandmother for feeding, and gets points for the overall score. Images at the bottom show different states of cat happiness. Activation of a good character provides food, and makes the cat even more happier. The images shows the progress of the game, and keeps users motivated to perform well. Lena receives a score of 1.5 out of 5 stars. Lena always wants more stars, the score is logged to the server for each game. Myra stands for Mobile Instrumental Review of Attention. 15 participants in a field trial played it. The mean game score correlates very well, with several important dementia rating scales, such as the Montreal Cognitive Assessment or MOCA, and even with activities of daily living. Finally, Lena had a lot of fun playing the game. Well, in the European project uh, Playtime, there was particular view on the neuropsychological profile of dementia, as you can see to the right, uh, following the approach of Mesolam and Weintraub and others, there should be a reflection of the impact of disease on distinctive neuroanatomic networks, which are associated with complex cognitive domains. And uh, as you can see here to the right in the diagram, particularly on the top, uh, with respect to Alzheimer's disease, uh, looking at the black part of the bars uh, in the early stages of dementia, there's more differentiation between domains that are unimpaired or mildly impaired versus those that are distinctly abnormal. 
And uh, looking at the light part of the bars uh, with respect to progress, uh, late dementia, you can see that symptom domain boundaries become blurred towards uniformly affected function. And that gives rise to the question uh, if there will be, uh, or there is an individual setting of the early neuropsychological profile. And uh, we're investigating this approach by means of looking at the different kind of exercise types that you can see to the left and how they relate to different kinds of uh, cognitive assessment categories, which are given by the seven subscores of the Golden Standard of Cognitive Assessment, the uh, uh, MOCA questionnaires. And uh, in a small indicative explorative study with eight participants and the 10 weeks intervention, we actually experienced uh, that specific game scores indicate specific neuropsychological performance. As you can see the table below that there's a statistically significant correlation between uh, particular MOCA subscores with uh, the reference to uh, cognitive categories with uh, the scores achieved from particular exercises that uh, represent obviously this kind of cognitive categories. And uh, in this sense, if you take the two apps, Digital Life and the uh, extension from Myra, you can see that more or less nearly all of the neuropsychological functional impairment categories are covered in the sense by the two apps. So this gives rise to follow up uh, the different kind of uh, cognitive deficits in uh, the person with dementia. So concluding early stage dementia has a diversity of cognitive disruption. A one size fits all stimulation is unlikely to be the most useful approach. And we should follow a more fine grained assessment of functional impairments and look at the aspects of cognitive performance that uh, should be targeted through the training. We are following up that uh, with personalized training using AI-enabled diagnostic, and I'm happy to invite you to join the first international symposium on artificial intelligence for prevention, intervention, and dementia care, which I'm gladly to uh, glad to co-chair um, in the frame of the second CREMS uh, International Dementia Conference and uh, the symposium taking part on 17th of November uh, this year. And uh, I'm. Uh, happy to uh, thank all the co-authors for the cooperation and uh, the work was done, uh, funded by national and um, European programs and I'm happy to receive your question on this topic. Thank you very much.